Welcome. In this session, we'll explore the Laplacian matrix of a graph. This matrix comes from the adjacency matrix and from the degree matrix. It describes both the adjacency and the degree at the same time. We can define it from the degree matrix and the adjacency matrix in this simple way. We can say that the Laplacian matrix is defined as the degree matrix minus the adjacency matrix. Let's make two observations before we continue. The first is that by construction, this has entries only on the diagonal. And by construction, the diagonal entries of this are always zero because we're not permitting loops in our graphs. If it was a loop, we would call it a pseudograph. And we're working with graphs. So that means that th this matrix this matrix is diagonal, and this one has zero entries on the diagonal. And that means that the Laplacian matrix could be a sparse matrix. That means it could be a lot of zeros. Or it could be a full matrix, where uh, very, very few entries are zero. So by construction, this is symmetric. The reason is that the diagonal, um, the degree matrix is a diagonal matrix, which is symmetric. And th the adjacency matrix is also symmetric. So the sum of two symmetric matrices is symmetric. Let's look at some examples, and then we'll consider the properties. So I found it really useful when I was learning this material to go through it by hand, and that's what we'll do for the rest of this session. There's a simple algorithm that we can describe. The first is we'll write the adjacency matrix for a graph. Then for every off-diagonal non-zero entry, we'll just put a minus sign in front of it. That will have the effect of computing minus AG. We then replace the diagonal entries with the degree of the vertex. And let's go through some examples. And let's start with our simple one from a previous lecture that we referred to as graph 1. Let's recall graph 1. Graph 1 looked like node 1, vertex 2, vertex 3, vertex 4, vertex 5. And there was a cycle in this component and a single edge in this component. And the way that we can compute the Laplacian matrix is this. Let's, com let's fill the diagonal entries in with the degree of each vertex. So the degree of this vertex is, there are two edges, so its degree is 2. For vertex 2, the degree is 2. For vertex 3, the degree is 2. For vertex 4, the degree is 1. And for vertex 5, the degree is 1. This gives us the size of our matrix. We then compute the adjacency components and we'll negate them as we go. Node vertex 1 is connected to 2, so we would, if in adjacency, would, we'd put a 1 here, so we'll put a minus 1 here. It's connected to 3, so we'll put a minus 1 here, and we can then fill in those. Let's just keep filling in row by row rather than taking advantage of the symmetry. Vertex 2 is connected to 1, so we would put a minus 1 here. It's connected to 3, so we'll put a minus 1. It's not connected to 4, not connected to 5. Vertex 3 is connected to 1 and connected to 2 and not connected to 4 or 5. 4 is not connected to 1, nor to 2, nor to 3, and it is connected to 5. And no, vertex 5 is not connected to 1, nor to 2, nor to 3, and it is connected to 4. Let's observe for this matrix that these are now dense blocks. If we block partition this matrix, we can say that its block partitioning is, we could call this L1, uh, let's call that sub-block 1, and this part would look like L1 sub-block 2, and these would be zeros. So we can see that 
this has a block structure to it. Next, let's try our graph 2. And we can recall graph 2 was it has six vertices, one, two, three, four, keep our numbering the same, five, and six. And the connectivity was one connected to two, two connected to three, two connected to four, four connected to five, four connected to six. So this is a bipartite graph. We could have drawn it as a tree. Let's leave it this way. L1 equals, now, let's, let's fill in the adjacencies and then negate them. So in this one, we filled in the degree first. Now let's fill in the adjacencies. Let's not form any particular habits because we want to keep these ideas fresh in our minds. So here, one is not connected to itself. Instead of putting a zero, we're going to leave that entry blank because it's going to be filled in with the degree later on. So we can have one connected to two, so that'll be a one, and one is not connected to anything else. Two is connected to one. We leave that blank. Two is connected to three. And two is connected to four. Two is not connected to five, nor to six. Three is connected only to two, so that is zero, one, we leave that blank, zero, zero, zero. Four is connected, not connected to one, yes to two, no to three, we leave it alone for itself, yes to five, yes to six. Node 5 is not connected to 1, 2, or 3. So 0, 0, 0. It is connected to 4. We leave its own connection blank, and it is not connected to 6. And then node 6 is connected only to node 4. So we can write 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and we leave that blank. Now, previously, we computed the degree by looking at the graph. Let's now compute the degree using linear algebra. We know that the degree is the number of plus ones in this. Well, what I'll do is I'll do the first step, which is I'll negate the adjacency matrix. So we've taken the adjacency matrix, sorry, the second step, and now I'll negate every entry in the adjacency matrix. And I will then compute the number of minus ones in each row. So here, the number of minus ones is one. Here, the number of minus ones is three. Here, the number of minus ones is one. Here, the number of minus ones is three. Here, the number of minus ones is one. Here, the number of minus ones is one. As an aside, I'd like to explore what happens if I renumber the vertices of graph 2. Let's call it graph 5. And let's suppose that we number these as, let's make this 1, this 4, this 5. Let's make this 6, this 2, and this 3. And what does the adjacency matrix look like? Well, I can fill in the six diagonal entries immediately. And now, Vertex 1 is connected to 4, 5, and 6, so no connection to 2, no connection to 3, 4, 5, 6. 2 is connected only to 6. 3 is connected only to 6. 4 is connected only to 1. 5 is connected only to 1. And 6 is connected to 1, 2, and 3. 1, 2, 3, not to 4, and not to 5. If we examine this, we can see that this has a curious block structure. 
that now the diagonal entries are zero matrices and we can represent this as a five sub block or subgraph and this has to be because the adjacency matrix is symmetric that has to be a 5s where we transpose it and what we see from this is that the diagonal blocks are zero and the off diagonal blocks are non-zero it turns out that for a bipartite graph it can always be renumbered so that this structure appears in its adjacency matrix renumbering the vertices corresponds to permuting interchanging rows and columns of the adjacency matrix this problem of determining whether two graphs are isomorphic or equivalently whether there's an adjacency matrix that is similar to another adjacency matrix this is a problem where the complexity is simply currently not known we don't know whether this problem is NP complete or not we know that we can test it by testing all possible um, renumberings but that's an exponential problem so with graphs and matrices we very quickly hit, hit some of the limits of our current human understanding let's summarize some of the observations that we can make about a Laplacian matrix by construction it is symmetric and by construction every entry is real it's also diagonally dominant and this is a term from linear algebra that we may not have come across so let's define it what that means is that for every row that the sum of the entries along the row is no greater than the diagonal entry so we've represented the Laplacian matrix using a capital L let's represent its entry as a lowercase l so what we mean that is that L I I which is the ith entry that's the diagonal we're saying that that has to be greater than or equal to the sum over all j that are not the diagonal entry of and the definition is the absolute value of entry i j so what we're doing is we're saying that if we go if we go along row i so we're holding i constant and if we go through columns one two etc up until we've run out of columns that the sum of the absolute values of the non-diagonal entries is of the absolute values of the non-diagonal entries an upper bound is the diagonal entry now in our case that has to be true and we could actually replace that greater than or equal to with an equal sign because in our case the diagonal entry is the degree of the vertex and the degree of the vertex is the sum of the minus ones or the absolute value plus ones of that row so that actually has to be an equality so we know that that's got to be true now a fact from linear algebra is that any diagonally dominant matrix is positive semi-definite and we can recall that term from prerequisite material as meaning that every eigenvalue is not negative so if it was positive definite that would mean that every eigenvalue is strictly greater than zero positive semi-definite means that every eigenvalue is greater than or equal to zero how could that be is that is it possible that um, for example we might not have imaginary well imaginary eigenvalues are eliminated by these two statements every real symmetric matrix has only real eigenvalues every domin diagonally dominant symmetric real matrix is a positive semi-definite so that means every eigenvalue so that is that is um, any or every depending on how you want to phrase it today any 
eigenvalue is greater than or equal to zero? Well, that makes me wonder, well, what are some of these eigenvalues and eigenvectors? Well, I know one immediately, and that is, let's suppose we try taking a, a Laplacian matrix and multiply it by the ones vector. Well, that has to equal the Laplacian matrix is the diagonal minus the adjacency times the ones, and that has to be the ones for the degree matrix are the degree vector, and then the ones times the adjacency matrix times the ones is the degree vector. So that has to be the zero. So that is true of any Laplacian matrix. If we take the Laplacian matrix and we multiply it once, we always get zero. So we can then observe that means that one is an eigenvector and zero is its eigenvalue. And that property that a matrix times a vector equals a multiple of the vector is the definition of the eigenvector. And then the value that is that scalar multiple is the eigenvalue. And so what we've done is we've constructed a symmetric positive definite matrix, symmetric positive semi-definite matrix, where the ones vector is always an eigenvector and the zero is the eigenvalue. Well, this raises the interesting question of what about the next eigenvector?